now, we've got to be Athens. So you start shifting the idea of what it means to live together with all its advantages of defense, you know, interaction, intellectual stimulation. And you're going to try and tell the stories that the community, so it's compulsory for everybody to go, including, we believe, the women and the slaves, uh, compulsory to go to the theater to understand, especially psychologically, what's actually happening to us. So we will have the story of the man who kills his father, you know, sleeps with his mother, uh, doesn't know it's all of society, gets the play, is in absolute anguish, discovers it's because he's Slept with, uh, slept with his father, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, just as a, you know. <laughs> Killed his father, slept with his mother. Uh, so he puts his eyes out, so finally he can see because he's blind. Where did Shakespeare get this idea from? Um, and then is led around for the rest of his days by his daughter. Uh, so why do we tell this story? Well, because it's all embedded in our unconscious. It's no fluke that Freud then picked up these things and started um, articulating, you know, what they said in the Greek plays as part of the fundamental uh, building blocks of our psyche. You know, and then Jung went on much further and so on and so forth. But Jung just took it all from all the fairy stories. It's already there, do you understand me? It's already in our psyches. It's just in the last 100, 150 years that we've started knowing or breaking out this which on a, before then we knew on a visceral level, now we have the information about it. If you take that, that it is our job to tell the story to the community, then the way in which we tell the story is vitally important. And we are the carriers of language. And if we don't carry the language, nobody else is going to because we're the only people that have got all the ingredients for it. Do you understand me? Well, of course, individual poets do, but we actually are the ones that try and do it collectively in the schools, in the colleges, and in the theaters. We are endeavoring to build up the communities so people, person on person, are actually trying to interact with each other and using the whole of our bodies. Now, if you just keep fast forward, and, and you know, we can go through how Rome then used, used the theater, then it went absolutely dead, you know, through the Middle Ages, except for a few, eventually the church suddenly realized, oh, if you actually have people acting out Noah's tale, the people remember it better. Uh -huh. And of course, as soon as they started doing that, the different guilds playing the different, the different parts, you know, uh, uh, the butchers doing Abraham and Isaac and things like that. But of course, within the guilds, then the people who were the natural actors start coming forth and embellishing the scripts and making all the clowns outrageous and the church saying, we can't have this, get them out here, you know, and going into the marketplace. And we're back with the miracle and mystery plays and those very direct rhythms of the miracle and mystery plays, which are the first plays Shakespeare would have seen, besides studying Roman plays all the way through his education. Uh, so he starts putting those things together. Um, but, but if you... And then suddenly there's this burst into the Elizabethan age, and you have to say, why? And because, of course, it was then things that had been underneath all the time, suddenly coming out, suddenly bursting forth. And listen, we all have to get on, to, uh, on our knees to Erasmus, because Erasmus, churchman though he was, said, I don't want to, I'm going to leave my order, wander about, but my job is to set up schools all over Europe, which then England took pretty seriously, which is how come <laughs> Will Shakespeare had a grammar school to go to. Um, uh, so that people can learn without it being through the church. So we get into secular education, and we're going to use all the learning from the Greeks and the Romans just as much as the, the teaching of the church, in fact, more. 
and we are going to teach everybody Latin, so we've got a universal language, and then, of course, everybody mixes Latin with their own language, and so we get the English language. So Anglo-Saxon and Latin comes in, and then we have this incredibly rich language in which there's many, 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 many more words, and the words themselves, like dwindle and... Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Google, sea change, heart of hearts. I mean, heart of hearts says it so poetically, you know, but it is an image. It's a heart inside the heart. And yet we all instinctively know what heart of hearts is. And how often do we say, in my mind's eye, you know, and it is the imagery that we get, which, by the way, is all linked to mnemonics. Uh, uh, and therefore memory, but we can't go down there. Um, uh, <laughs> I love going down there, that's the only problem. Um, uh, I don't know what I was saying about that, but I was saying something about it. Oh, I was saying about Erasmus. So that, that um, Erasmus understood and spent his life going from European country to European country really trying to develop curriculum for the schools. And it really took off in England. And, and because of the bureaucracy uh, um, of our school systems, actually you're right, the first thing is, is to teach ourselves how to do this. Every school does have a Shakespeare program, which means that and most high school teachers are desperate for help because they know the way they're teaching it, the kids hate it, and if you can shift into the kids actually doing it, then it just changes the whole conversation. And um, uh, one of the most successful things when we were in the Roslindale Lockup Center in, in Massachusetts, which is for young violent offenders, when we did the Macbeth and Hamlet with them, they would do two things. They'd do the play, and then they'd tell their own story. So they'd enact their own stories, uh, seen from Hamlet, seen from their own lives, seen from Hamlet, seen from their own lives. And their ability to start to relate their lives to these great texts, but also know that the creation of words, which is why hip-hop is such a, and rap is such, uh, you know, got such parallels with what we do, to actually have that, what do I, what, that, that, that rite of passage, but knowing that you are doing something so authentic and knowing that you're giving language to what is actually going on is so important. However, the, we have this other problem, which is, you know, we have to get funding for these things. We have to be able to prove that this is not a lot of touchy-feely in the schools that might have people running around, you know, shouting, yelling, fighting, Capulets, Montagues, whatever, which of course is where it usually yeah. ends up. <laughs> so we need the, the studies that say this absolutely allows the kids to learn much better, this kind of teaching. I want to say one thing which I leapt over, but I think it's important, which is the art of rhetoric which Shakespeare inherited and from the Romans and the Greeks. And there was Christian rhetoric as well, but it tended to go towards logic because they wanted to prove what they already knew. <coughs> um, but, but the art of rhetoric began in Sicily when a tyrant had seized all the lands of the people and then they managed to topple him and they were t trying to get their lands back. So they started... Built, there was such chaos that they said, all right, we're going to have trials. Uh, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to investigate this, make public hearing. And so they built up the art of rhetoric to be able to make the argument more passionately. Theatre listened to this and started stealing the art of rhetoric to make plays with. So it is no coincidence that law and order is our most popular program. <laughs> the difference is that we are watching law and order on our television, which is, means we're looking at the actors from here to here. Whereas in the theater, it's the whole body. And as you all know from doing Shakespeare plays, what you feel in the groin 
is one set of information. What you feel in the heart is another. What comes out of your spiritual self, you know, and your soul is another, and what comes from your intellect is another. We know that there are messages coming from all parts of the body. Television is the, only the visual, and only from here to here. Oh, and the other thing is in neuroscience is that of all the basic human emotions, right, so lust, food, suckling, the, the greatest one for our survival is